Hey guys, it's Dan with Excel VBA is Fun. Welcome back. Um, what I want to go over today is how you can populate a user form. We're just going to create a few fields in a user form. One, two, three fields. Um, two of which are a text box and one will just make a check box. And what we're going to show you how to do is really cool. Um, we're going to trigger it by whenever we click on the row that the user form would pop up. So you click on the row number. Now we've shown you how to do that with a right click event in the past, but somebody wanted to know how to do that when you click on the row. So and then it'll bring up the user form, uh, which will already be populated with Sally Green and False in this case. And then you can let's say make a simple change and then click Save, and it'll repopulate it back onto your data sheet, whether or not this sheet is uh, visible or not. So we're going to review some of those things. Stick with us, and we'll get to it. First thing of course is we're going to start in Alt F11. Alt F11 gives us to the Visual Basic sheet or editor. We're going to click here and add a new user form. It doesn't have to be too big. I'm going to make this really kind of crude and you can download this and play around with it yourself. I'm not even going to put uh, too awful many labels here. I think this one was uh, is parent that was a checkbox and then okay fine I guess I will put some labels here there's a label and there's a label this one is gonna say color and it should say favorite color but I'm trying to rush here this is name and let's control click and scooch these a little bit thinner all right so the first thing we're going to do, let's give this a name in the names box. If this doesn't show up, hit F4. TB name for text box name. Okay, this is going to be TB color. This will be CB as in checkbox. That's just preference. Uh, CB is parent. It's more meaningful when you have a lot of code and you need to refer to one of these controls because then you can do so with uh, without much thought. Put a button and how about save? We'll address that later. All right, so yeah, when we run this user form, of course, nothing, it doesn't do anything yet. Does nothing. Not, we haven't programmed anything. I'm going to just collapse that down a little bit here. What I want to do is whenever this is the entire row is selected, that's when I want the user form to pop up. And when it does pop up, it should have whatever's in column one of my selection to be in the name one and and so on. So I'm, let's show you how to do that. We're going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And again, pardon the crude uh, volume on this recording. I'm away on business and I have a laptop here, so I don't have my headset. But anyway, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the sheet that we're working with. And we're going to go to a worksheet macro event. And the default one is the one we actually want. It's a selection change. So we want it to trigger whenever things are selected, but I only want to trigger it really when the selection is the entire row. So there's a, there's a few different ways you could do that. We're going to explore one. So how do you trigger a macro to only consider certain certain cells and other ones it's not really going to trigger well we use if not intersect and you can see more uh, information on this using my other videos uh, just type in if not intersect but basically it's going to take into account the target is the the thing that we select when it which triggers a selection change the target is uh, what we select so if the intersection of the target and what I want it to be is nothing, meaning not nothing, then is something. So basically, if what I've selected and what I want to be my criteria have intersected, then I want you to do this. Otherwise, who cares is what it's saying here. So the area that we want to do is we'll just say A2 through A2. I don't know, 10,000 or something. A2 through 
uh, 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 Z1000, 10,000. So if that intersection is nothing, then or is not a thing. So then we trap it. So let's go ahead and see if we can trap it. I'm going to hit stop. And I'm going to click on the saw right here. All right, so we have a type mismatch. So I should have said range of A2 through Z to 10,000. Now let's hit F5. So the target is in cell A3, and is that within the range A2 through Z gazillion, whatever? Yes. Now what if I select the entire row? It's considering that to be within A2 through Z, whatever. So that's good. So that was the first part. Now we're going to do one more if statement for fun. We're going to say if target dot, let's see, what was it going to say here? If target dot address is equal to the target, which is also called selection in normal cases, if the target's address is the same as the target dot uh, entire row dot address, then we have a match. Um, yes, full row selected. Made a little comment there. And if. So now, if the target's address, which is 3 through 3, is the same as the target entire row address, which is 3 through 3, then we have the entire row selected. And that's what we wanted. So now we'll fill a user form. So we didn't give the user form a, a very fun name. I think it's just called user form 1 by default. And it sure is. So we're going to say user form one dot and this the TB name equals let's see here we could just say target dot uh, let's see we'll say cells and what row do we want well we want the targets row so target dot row that's row three in this case and what column well we want column one for the name right so then we'll just kind of repeat that copy and paste here a couple times and then we're going to say uh, so this was TB color and this is going to be CB, whatever in the world it was. So dot CB, yeah, is parent. Great. So we had uh, column two and column three in that order. So let's hit F8 and see what happens. So the name, which is blank right now, is going to be uh, the target row, which is three. So row three, column one, which if we hover, it says Sally. So it says Sally. Uh, we'll see that this one's green and this would be false. So now we're just going to hit F8, which will trigger the user form and should open the user form. If it doesn't, we would just put a user form one dot show at the very end of our code. Okay, and we do need to do that. Fantastic. User form one dot show. And that should show us the fruits of our labor here. So let's do that with the next example here. And I'm not even going to debug through. You think you got the picture. Let's click on this one here. So it automatically filled out. Timothy, green, and his parent is false, which means unchecked. So I'll close it. Let's uh, do this one. Billy, red, his parent is checked because it's true. So now what we want to do is put some programming behind our nice little save button. This is, uh, again, this is kind of a crude example, but I think it will be, be very meaningful to a lot of people uh, just filling out a user form and how to have that go back and affect um, 
records or, or rows, if you will. What I want to do now, last thing I want to do, I'm going to cheat my butt off here. I'm going to put a little label, maybe even make it invisible in a second. I want to put a little label, and I want it to say 5 because I'm on row 5. That way, even if somebody clicks away and does other stuff, perhaps this record remembers that it was from row 5. And that way we can easily tag it back to row 5 from whence it came, if you will. So let's do that. Alt F11. We click here, and I think I closed my toolbox, didn't I? So we're going to go to View, Toolbox. Because I want to put a little label right here. And right now I don't mind it being visible, but later I want it to be invisible once I know it's working really well. This will be my row number, so I'm going to put LBL row, label row. So that one, let's go back to our sheet one event here. And finally, I want user form one dot LBL whatever equals the current row. So I'm going to say target dot row. Boom. That'll put the row in there. So let's test that out. Let's click on this one here. The row 2. Good. So we'll need that. So when we, when we click the save button, what we want to program into that is that we're going to concentrate on this row. Row 2 in this case, or whatever the label says. That's the row. Comma, and then the column that we're going to affect for that sheet is just we know this one was uh, what column one or a, a two or b and then c or three so it's really simple at this point the only thing that gets more complicated is if you have like a lot more tabs or a lot more cells or check boxes but all it is is multiplying your efforts barely and of course in this case uh, it would be good to tell it what uh, sheet that we want to use for this so we're going to we're going to dim or basically declare a certain shortcut name, an abbreviated name. So we'll just say WS for worksheet um, as a worksheet. You could put WS or you could put uh, uh, SHT1 or whatever you want. Now we're going to set WS to be equal to this workbook dot sheets parentheses. And right now it's called Sheet 1. If I renamed it, I would need to put the new name in there. So there we go. Now I can refer to all this code instead of retyping it as simply WS. And when I hit a, a, a period, uh, it will give me all the choices that would go along with the object of Sheet 1, this worksheet. So all we have to do here, let's establish the row that we need. So let's see let's just say X is going to be equal to um, we're inside the user forms code so we can refer to the user form one as now we can call it me so X is equal to me dot LBL row that gives us the row that we're on so now we can use X instead of that variable we're gonna say uh, ws dot cells and we're going to say row uh, which is x the current row comma and the column we know is one so we have our current worksheet that we're dealing with dot cells gives us latin lawn if you will row and column row whatever the label says and definitely column one or a that's the name field so that's going to feed back uh, me dot tb name. I'm going to copy that down and we'll be done. So it's really quite simple. So now you have two in column three, and we're just reversing the thing that we did a moment ago. This is going to be me dot tb color. This is going to be me dot cb is whatever is apparent. So now this will send the information back to the sheet, and we can just make the user form hide like me.hide or user form one dot hide would do it also and that would just basically make it leave go out of sight if you wanted to unload me instead unload space me that would clear out all of the entries as well as hide it or, or basically end the user form for the until it's uh, brought up again 
So uh, we're going to go ahead and save this workbook in a second. I'll go ahead and show you what that did. I'll just save this really quick. Um, user form practice one. And I'll let you download that from my Dropbox link. And we'll, we'll certainly give you the link in the description. And you can look on there. Let's go ahead. And, so if I click on any old cell, it's not going to trigger because it's not equal to the entire row so if but if I click like this it's fine so let's um let's let's watch very carefully watch this true become a false when I click this to be false and then I click save so it knows that X is going to be equal to row 5 from this label and so it's going to just ping those back onto there so watch this this will be become false and then the user form will hide boom let's click here well Sally's new favorite color is pink. Save. And did you see that pink just saved right there? So, I mean, it's really quite useful, especially in the sense that, um, well, not in this case because we have a click event that triggers it, but uh, there are ways to access this data without even this sheet even being visible. This could be hidden or very hidden and you can still affect changes as if you had a, a normal program you know that pops up and has databases and things. So it's very useful and I hope this has helped you. Thanks for watching. God bless.